Last time I built a bike, Shimano asked me to build the bike that I wanted to ride then and there. So I built my idea of a cross-country bike to suit my local trails, which, if you remember, was particularly apt given when I built the bike. They've now asked me to build my ultimate do-anything bike. Something that is gonna suit my local riding, but also things wanna go a bit further afield and even cope with the sort of stuff in those big bike parks. And you know what? The bike I've built this time is by far the nicest bike I've ever built. Okay, I know what you're thinking. What is he gonna build for his ultimate trail bike? I've got to tell you, it was an easy choice this time for once. Didn't think it was gonna be when they initially asked me, but there's one bike that I've not been able to stop thinking about. Check this out, this is it. Well, I don't know if you're surprised, but there's never been such an easy choice as far as the frame goes to me. Yep, so this is a Mondraker Raze SL. It's 130 mil travel trail bike. Now, you may or may not know this, but I've had a thing for Mondraker bikes for many years. Um, I'll spare you all the details because there's a couple of videos that explain some of it. They're both gonna be down there in the description. But essentially, back in 2014, they made a bike that revolutionized the geometry of bikes. And pretty much everything you see today, arguably, has Mondraker to thank for it. And it dramatically changed the way I could ride. And for that, I will always remember them. So I went to see them a few months back, and it was the first time I'd seen one of these frames in the flesh. I saw the prototype as well, and I got to ride one. And I was completely blown away, and I've not stopped thinking about it since. So when Shimano asked me to pick a frame, I was like, well, for starters, it's this. Right, so you've got 130 mil travel on the rear, full carbon frame, it's using their stealth carbon. I mean, look at that blade of a top tube. I absolutely love it, it's ridiculous. They developed a new method of producing carbon frames in order to make this top tube. It's like a blade, it's like a helicopter rotor blade or something, it's just, Absolutely stunning. So it uses the zero suspension system on here. So it's essentially kind of a four bar variant. Yeah, so you've got the rocker here, driving the shock, but you've also got the linkage down the bottom here, which being between the bottom bracket axle and the rear axle kind of makes it a four bar. And it's a very supportive progressive linkage. So much so that the shock on here, Fox DPS, um, it barely has any compression tuning. It's a very light compression tune, so you could say it's a really efficient frame. Uh, but one really important thing to reference is it's got the mind telemetry system built in. So this one has it on the frame here, and there's also a unit to plug into a fork, so I'm gonna show you that off the bike in a minute. Now, the cool thing about this is it has a GPS system in there and accelerometers and all the rest of it. It helps you get your suspension set up perfectly because it can measure where you are in the stroke, front and rear on the bike, tells you how much travel you're using, how much travel you're not using. Right, should you have a look at all the stuff I'm gonna put on it then? Okay, right, let's get this bike together then. The frame has been supplied to me with a Fox DPS shock. It's a great shock. It's got the light compression tune that suits it. Needless to say, I was gonna go for a Fox fork. Now the 36 with that grip two damper, like the factory fork, is, is just amazing. I've ridden several versions of it on different bikes. They supplied me this one with part of the mine telemetry system on it and the rest I've actually installed myself. So this is the front unit that pairs up with the rear one. It looks a little bit like a fender. It's a really discreet system, but what it offers is unreal. So more on that coming up. Okay, handlebar time. And I have gone for a Renthal fat bar carbon. This is the high rise, the 40 mil, a full 800 mil width, which I'm not gonna be trimming down. That is what I like. I love a high, wide front end. Uh, I'm just gonna use a bit of carbon gripper on there. It does have like a grip texture to this, but I always tend to do this with carbon bars just because you kind of really should. Uh, just to help minimize the amount of torque on the stem there so you don't have to over torque them essentially and avoid any creaking. Now you might notice that this one is in the team issue colors, which is a nice surprise. Obviously, this is a Shimano bike build, so they were like, go whole hog. So I have, I've gone for XTR four piston brakes, and these are just a thing of beauty. They're incredibly light, they are insanely powerful. 
There's another little thing as well about having the XTR logo at the front of the bike on the bars. You could say that I could get very similar performance from the XT brakes, but you look down and you see the XTR. <laughs> the best of the best. Okay, time to get the bottom bracket and cranks in. A small detail on this frame that kind of glossing over a bit, but it's a threaded bottom bracket shell. Now I'm not against press fit, but threaded bottom brackets are far easier to maintain and they're far easier to install and they're far less likely to develop creaking. I'm sold. Now, although I've got XTR on the front of the bike, I'm putting a trusty XT rear mech on a bike. Um, I have a habit of clipping derailleurs and stuff, so I'm not gonna cry when I clip this one. Now this, oh, got for Industry 9 wheels. I've had my eye on a set of these for such a long time. So I've got the Hydra hubs with 0.52 degrees between engagement, 690 points of engagement. Listen to this. Oh, man. But I've actually chosen Arrow because I genuinely like the ride quality of Arrow rims. I love how the spokes thread directly into the flange of the hub there, and yet you can control the spoke via the built-in, I guess you could call it built-in nipple where it threads into the rim there. Now these rims are actually 28 hole and they're 27 millimeter in a width, so they're not the widest out there. They're not kind of like on trend as far as the wider rims go, but that's fine by me because I actually think narrower rims ride a little bit better. I tend to have a bigger rotor on the front, in this case a 203 Ice Tech, and on the rear I've got a 180 Ice Tech on there. My theory is, on a short travel bike, if I have too much power on the back end of the bike, I'm going to be locking the wheel up, and when it's locked up, then you've got no braking power. Now, back on the bike, I've got an XTR cassette. Now, yes, the XTR cassette is seriously expensive. I've chosen the XTR cassette. Obviously, I wasn't under a budget constraint on this build, but I've chosen it because this is the licensed one that Shimano offer. So this is a three-piece design, titanium, steel, and alloy. Now, it weighs 365 grams. The Dior 12-speed one is 240 grams heavier. That's nearly another cassette heavier. If I could only have one XTR thing, it would be the right hand shifter. It feels great, it's got a cartridge bearing action in it, so it is just a little bit smoother. The XTR chain has got the hollow pin construction, so I've gone for an XT chain, something just a little bit more durable. Shifting performance will be the same, although obviously it's just a fraction heavier. Now I've been using SPDs since the very beginning, and well, I've got XTR, I'm a fan, what can I say? Now seat post wise, but I've gone for one-up components because I wanted a seat post that was durable, that had massive drop, and it was something that I could tune it the way I want. And then there's the Physique Alpaca saddle, dead simple. Fits two 16 gram CO2 cartridges, um, and you've got a multi-tool in there. And time for handlebar grips. I've gone for something a little different here. I've gone for some Renthal Ultra Tacky grips and they're literally the stickiest things known to mankind. But they are incredible if, like me, you like riding with no gloves. Now, I know some people criticise me for that, and I will wear gloves for protection in the right places, but for general riding, I love the feeling of bare hands. So neat and tidy. Tell you what, that is a bike. Oh my god! Oh, it's nice to finally have it together. Got to do a little bit of setup stuff on there next, but uh, oh my days, that is probably the nicest bike I've ever built. In fact, it is the nicest bike I've ever built. That I'm talking about. Must have banged me head. Man, I cannot wait to ride this thing tomorrow. Oh, <laughs> look at it! What a bike! That right now, that is literally my perfect bike. Oh man.
You might have thought in building a bike like this, I'd be off somewhere really exotic to do the riding stuff, but you know, that's just not me. I just love riding bikes anywhere. It could be doorstep trails back home in Bath. It could be classic spots like this. But you know, when I started riding, there wasn't really anywhere to ride. You had to go and ride and find stuff, and then you'd find other bikers and find it where they rode. These days, there's just so much. You've got Waymark trails, you've got trail centers, you've got bike parks, you've got regulated trails. We're spoiled for choice, you know? Good. And a smile, tell a thousand words. <laughs> Absolutely love it. On paper, already knew this bike was going to be great. This is personal, right? Built the bike. It's got the stuff on it that I specced on him myself. So now hub just as soon as you're hitting those burns. It feels amazing. I know, this is everything to me in the way I ride a bike. I want the bike to be light and responsive and to feel the ground, whether I'm hitting jumps like this or, you know, like backsides of routes and things like that. So it's so important to me, the whole feel of a bike. <laughs> The things that are really important to me when out riding is this. You know, sometimes it's important to just take five, you know, enjoy, absorb where you are. I guess that's why the camera is so important to me and the whole photography thing. I love to sort of appreciate where I am. It forces me to spend some of my time looking for a lens. I think in this day and age with how fast paced society is, and you know, you can have different types of ride as well. You can go belting through the woods, having the best time, you know, just, you know, massaging the ground for speed and doing all that stuff. And there's other times when you can have what I call like a heads up ride, where you just chill out and just look around you. Now, you don't want it to go past too quickly. You know, I just love being in the woods. I don't know what it is about it. Maybe it's just as simple as the fact it's a reset for life, but it's probably one of the reasons I like riding short travel bikes like this so much, because it makes me feel that bit more connected to the terrain, you know, it's about the being in the woods. You know, I'm not on a steamroller, just, you know, big travel bikes smoothing out the bumps. I want to feel everything. I want to use that. You know, I think being proactive on a bike is so important to me in the way that I like to ride. And that could be, you know, being efficient in terms of pumping the backside of a jump for speed, or it could be, you know, hopping over routes to not get slowed down. You know, it's all about generating speed and momentum. And this bike, as it is, with the travel, the incomplete setup on it, is, becomes an extension of me and the way that I ride. Everything on here I have picked specifically for a reason. The wheels, the engagement on them, the weight of the wheels, how fast they accelerate and spin up to speed. They just feel fantastic. And that combined with the ultra light cassette on the back. I mean, the XL cassette is the premium one, but it's so light considering just how big it is. And it really does help that rear suspension work better. I still don't think that I'm worthy of an XTR derailleur. I think, you know, I'll leave that for the racers out there. I'm far too terrified of destroying one. Uh, 130 mil on the rear, 150 on the front. Mondraker have always done this. Had a little bit more travel on the front. It just makes perfect sense to me in biking terms. So much more confidence on the front end there, but the back end, you really need to work it. Oh man, this bike just comes alive. As you know, uh, it's a weird thing of mountain biking because it's, it's truly something that's so close to my heart, but it can be really frustrating as well. And when you've got a hobby, it's also a career, sometimes they collide and it can be really quite testing. But you know, days like this, when you work on a project like this, build, basically build your ultimate bike and get to go and hammer it on some trails, makes it all worthwhile really, doesn't it? There we go. You're not going to find me happier than when I'm turning pedals, especially on a bike like this. It's just, what a great reset for in the world. Now, normally, I'll probably ask you what you think of my bike at this point, but if I'm truthful, 
don't really care because in my eyes, this bike is absolutely perfect. But I would like to know, what would you have built if you had the choice of doing what I did for today's video? I'll leave you to it in the comments. I'm gonna go and have a bit more riding time while I can. See you later.